Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Rob Motive JT. If you're new to the channel, or maybe you've been hanging around for a while and just haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. So I heard some news today. I read something on the web, and that is that Jeep is now going to be putting an electric, or a hybrid, rather, system into the Jeep Gladiator. This is going to be coming out in 2022. And I'm thinking, you know, is the upcoming Gladiator a joke? Is this electric Gladiator or hybrid 4XE Gladiator a joke? Well, first of all, let me tell you, you know, we have the Wrangler 4XE now, right? So it was inevitable that Jeep was gonna put this thing into the Gladiator, and they are. So what is it? What is the Gladiator 4XE? Well, it's going to be a combination of a 2.0 liter turbocharged engine and dual motor configuration. The first motor propels the truck and the second is a generator, you know, to create power for the battery. The Gladiator 4XE will produce 375 horsepower. Now that is pretty good. And 470 pound feet of torque. So there's a little light in this dark tunnel, right? That will be the most powerful Gladiator that you can get. I wonder how acceleration will be. Now, there's supposed to be a battery that provides 25 miles of all electric driving range. And we're gonna get to that in just a minute. Release date for this is supposed to be the first quarter of 2022, we shall see. So is this a joke? I mean, let's talk about this battery range, right? I mean, you know, they're coming out with this hybrid and everybody's doing it, and they have to do it right now to stay competitive because everybody else is. But 25 mile range? I mean, is this really a hybrid vehicle? You know, it almost seems to me like you could put a couple little nine volt batteries in the back and coast for 25 miles and call it a hybrid vehicle. I don't know really what Jeep is trying to do with this unless that 25 miles is the sole power source or propulsion system for the Jeep Gladiator if you're making short trips. In other words, if I go out this morning and I jump in my Gladiator and I'm gonna drive to the grocery store, which is about three miles away, am I going to be running solely on the electric part of the system or will the gas system kick in? You know, they mentioned that the second motor is a generator to charge the battery, right? Well, that's gonna need a fuel source. It's gonna run off of gas. So I would assume as soon as that battery starts to drop, the system is gonna kick in, fire up, and start recharging the battery. So it's not truly an all electric system, which they don't claim it to be. They call it a hybrid, and it is a hybrid. But 25 miles? I mean, really? What are you going to get on that? You know, you're not going to take a long distance trip. That 25 miles is going to be gone just like that. Now, the other thing about it is, is look at all of the extra maintenance and possibility for problems they're adding to the Jeep Gladiator. You know, Jeep doesn't have the best reliability reputation anyway, right? So now we're going to throw in a whole nother propulsion system. You know, you're gonna to have to worry about maintenance on the regular engine or motor. You're gonna to have to change oil. You're gonna to have to make sure that everything is running properly. And then we're gonna flip over to the battery side. You know, how long is this 25 mile battery gonna last? Is Jeep gonna throw in a 10 year warranty? You know, like Toyota is doing, I think on the Prius. It's gonna be interesting to see. I just don't think it's realistic and it almost seems to me like Jeep is doing it just to try to be relevant in the electric or the hybrid market. Now, there also is rumor that Jeep is going to be coming out with an all electric. This is solely electric. You know, plug it in, no gas. They're going to be coming out with an all electric Jeep Wrangler. That's supposed to be soon. My guess is probably in the next two or three years, honestly. But when they come out with this, you know that it's gonna spread out and of course it's gonna make its way into the Jeep Gladiator. And the biggest problem with putting these systems into trucks really is load. I mean, what happens to that estimated 
let's just pick a number. Let's use 300 miles like this new Ford Lightning is supposed to have, right? 300 miles, but that's under ideal circumstances, right? Probably no headwind, not a lot of weight in the truck, you know, like in passengers, and certainly not a bed that's overloaded or a huge trailer behind it. You know, I don't know how much it's gonna cut it, but I would guess it could cut your range probably in half. So that means that every 150 miles, you're gonna have to pull over, probably wait in line. Let's say that these things catch on and there's a number of cars sitting there because how many charging bays can they build? How much room will they have to hold all these cars while they're sitting and waiting to be next up to plug in, right? So you're gonna use that 150 miles and then you're gonna pull off the road and you're gonna sit for at least according to Ford, and let's use them as the benchmark because they're the latest and greatest, but you're gonna sit for 44 minutes. Now that's assuming everything's ideal, and you know, we're people, we're gonna pull up, maybe we're gonna check some messages on our phone before we finally decide to get out. Once we get out, how long is it gonna take you to figure out how that thing works? Hopefully it'll be simple, kind of like the Tesla. You just beat the side of the tail light, a door flips open and you plug it in. If it's that simple, that should cut things down a little bit as far as you and I trying to figure out how to get connected. But once you are connected, then you get to sit and wait for that 44 minutes. And what are they going to do with all these people, right? I mean, if this really caught on and there were lots of people driving these electric vehicles, where are they going to go? I suppose you're going to have massive coliseum sized waiting areas, right? Because people got to go somewhere. They're not gonna wanna sit in their car for 44 minutes. Meanwhile, while you pull up, if all the charging bays are full, you're gonna sit there for their 44 minutes and then your 44 minutes. You know, realistically, it's probably a two hour commitment. That's assuming that you can pull in directly behind one person that's charging. What if there's two? You know, we're impatient. I can't imagine pulling up to a charging station and there's two or three cars ahead of me. That's, let's make it easy, that's an hour each. That's three hours before I can plug in and do my hour. That's four hours. I mean, this is the realistic part of this, right? You know, you see these presentations and they make it all sound so great. They're gonna create all these charging stations. Well, that's all good and fine, but you and I know that in the real world, it's not going to be a perfect situation, right? You're gonna have to wait and you're gonna spend a ton more time. Anyway, I just thought, uh, you know, this upcoming Gladiator, this upcoming hybrid 4XE Gladiator is really just kind of a joke. 25 miles? I mean, come on, why waste my time? Anyway, leave a comment, let me know what you think. Is this a realistic option for you? Or is it just Jeep's way to say that they have a hybrid vehicle. I'd be curious to know. Also, real quick, if you're interested, I do have two additional channels. The first is Rob Motive, all about my dyno-powered Toyota Tacoma. And the second, my newest channel is Rob Motive Tundra, all about my hunt for the new upcoming Toyota Tundra. Check them out, and if you're interested, please consider subscribing. Don't forget to click that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. And do me a favor, smash that subscribe button on the way out. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there.